just have the M3 Max on my desk because this is what it's really gonna be good at, machine learning. Now, I'm gonna do some training in later videos, but for today, I wanna do some local LLM installations. Kind of like having ChatGPT on your own computer without paying for it. All the stuff that we're gonna be doing today is free, except the M3 Max MacBook Pro, that's expensive. I'm gonna take you through the installation process and in the second part of the video, I'll show you a really easy installation with LM Studio. For those folks that don't wanna mess around with scripts and cloning Git repositories and building, that's gonna be pretty much plug and play, click here, click there, and you're done. So if you wanna jump to that, I'll leave chapter markers down below. We're gonna kick things off with this llama.cpp repository. Now, don't be afraid that it has llama in the name. It can actually run lots of different models that are out there, not just Facebook's Llama. Let's jump over to the terminal, and I do have Conda installed. If you don't know what that is or how to use it, I'll link to a video where I show you step by step how to do that. But I'm gonna just use it here. I'm gonna do Conda create to create a brand new environment. I'm gonna call it Llama CPP. We're gonna use Python 3.11. So let's do Conda activate to get in there. Now, if you have Git installed, it might clone repositories, fine, but it might not be able to support large file downloads because we're gonna need to get some of those gigantic files, which are the models. They could be seven gigabytes, they could be 13 gigabytes, some are 30 gigabytes. We're gonna use Homebrew, brew install git LFS. This will give you the ability to use LFS, large file support in Git. When that finishes, you need to read the instructions. It says update global Git config by running this command. So copy, paste, boom. And it says Git LFS initialized. Now let's go back to that repository and I'm gonna clone it. On the terminal, git clone, paste that URL, mess something up, try it again. What am I doing here? Now go back to the terminal, git clone, paste that URL, and we've got the repository. There it is, llama cpp. If we take a look inside, we got a bunch of files in there. Now it's got this um, Python requirements file. So we're gonna install the Python dependencies. Pip install dash r, and we're gonna read that requirements file that came with that repository. We're good to go. Now this is a C++ project, and a lot of other UIs are actually based on this project, like the one we're gonna look at, LM Studio. So what we need to do is actually call make in order for it to build. And you should already have the developer tools installed on this machine if you've installed Xcode and you followed my instructions from previous videos on how to set up your environment. If you just call make inside this directory, it should go ahead and build everything for you just like this. This will build from C++ code that's inside this directory all the tooling that you're gonna need to manipulate your models, do quantization of them and run benchmarks and run the actual models. This build process also ensures that this will utilize the GPU that's inside the M1 or M2 or M3 Apple Silicon machines. The next step is we need that very large model. Head over to Hugging Face. You'll run into a lot of these models. Here's one of them. This is Mistral 7B. 7B usually means that it's seven billion parameter model. There's 13B, you'll see 15, you'll see 30, and so on. This one is considered one of the newer, that's pretty good. You can see there's 22,000 downloads in the last month. And if you back up to this Technium directory, you'll see other models available that you can also download and install the same way. There's also popular models from The Bloke. You'll no doubt run into this person and their models. And down here on this page, you'll see some benchmark results of how well this model does against some of the more popular other models. Models. Let's go back to our terminal and I'm gonna do git clone and then paste that in. Except I'm gonna rename this to this open Hermes 7B V25. This is gonna take a little bit of time to download because it's huge. Now you need to actually place this folder that you just downloaded into the models directory in order for this to work. We need to move open Hermes into the models folder. The next one we're gonna need is called convert. It's a Python script and we get to select, do we want F16, F32, just different levels of quantization. I'm gonna say Python convert and I'm gonna ask it to create this new model that's in this new format, GGUF, and it's gonna be an F16 file type. If you wanna see what these look like, you can go to open Hermes here, this folder in the models directory, and then you'll see that here are the originals that we downloaded, which is about 13 gigabytes, 14, and this is this new one, which is another 14 and a half gigabytes 
that we've just created. We're talking about really large file sizes here. We're not done yet. We're going to do some more quantization. I'm going to use quantize here as the repository recommends. And this quantize tool is something we just built using make. We did that earlier. We're going to point it to this new F16 file that we've just converted. And we're going to output a new GGUF Q80 file. There it goes. It's doing the conversion eating up my hard drive space. <laughs> there we go. So we just converted that 14 and a half gigabyte file into a seven and a half gigabyte file. We've scrunched it up much smaller. And I'm going to do it again, this time to another format, this one right here. This is the Q4K format. We're going to take a look at these different formats a little bit later in the video because they do have different results. All right, that one is even smaller, 4.3 gigabytes. I'm going to run a benchmark now to see how quickly we can generate tokens. We're going to use the batch bench tool. By the way, I'm going to link to all these commands in the description so you can also copy and paste these. It's easier copying and pasting than reading them off the screen in the video. This is the batch bench. Right now it's actually doing the inference. The CPU is barely being used, but the GPU, oh, don't make me a liar. Where's the GPU usage? There it is. It's maxing out that GPU. It's not using the CPU for inference. It's only using the GPU and memory. That's a big bump in the memory there. This machine has 64 gigs of RAM. We're using 18 and we got 46 gigabytes cached. You can take a look up here when this thing is running. So right here, we've got a 13.49 gigabyte model, 7 billion parameters, and the memory required is about 13 gigabytes. So if you try to running this on an 8 gigabyte machine, you can imagine what's going to happen. Even a 16 gigabyte machine might struggle a bit with this. And we're done. Now, what does this mean? Well, here's the prompt size. We can change the prompt size in our initial command here. This parameter happens to be the prompt size. You can read the docs. I'll link to that down below of what all these parameters are. TG is text to generate. B is how many connections are incoming at the same time. If you're hosting this model, it can have multiple connections being processed at the same time in parallel. Right now, this is only doing one. Some of the more interesting ones here are this one, S underscore PP. This is how quickly the tokens from the prompt are processed. And this one is how quickly tokens can be generated. So we got 237 tokens per second is the total speed here. We can actually decrease the memory requirement by using the quantized model. So here we're using the Q80 quantized model that we've converted earlier, and we're using the same parameters here. Let's run that one. And here you'll see that the memory required is half, 7,338. So on a 16 gigabyte machine, this should be able to work fine. And you'll also notice that the speed of tokens per second has gone up. It's a matter of balancing these things out, making sure you have enough memory, making sure that the token amounts are correct. And this is where if you don't want to have to worry about memory, then you get the 192 gigabyte M2 Ultra machine, right? Or the 128 gigabyte M3 Max machine machine. Oh, there it is. The fans have kicked up and the temperature is really kicked up here. We've got all the cores heating up to in the high 90s. Now look at that GPU kicking up a storm. Memory is still okay. Well, yeah, memory is okay because we only using the seven gigabyte requirement here. By the way, let me take this moment while it's running to uh, just ask you to go ahead and like this video if you like this kind of content. Subscribe to the channel, especially if you want to see that video where I'm going to be training. That's coming up soon. Do you hear that? You probably hear that by now, right? We're at 5,500 RPM for that fan. That's nuts. As a side note, this right here is the loudest MacBook ever. It's louder than the Intel one when the fans spin high enough. The speed here is significantly faster. I'm going to go ahead and terminate this. I want to show you one more thing here, which is this command. This is a basic server allowing us to serve up this model with a HTTP backend. This specifies that we can do four parallel tasks at the same time. And there we go. The server has started. This is the URL. I'm going to go over here to my browser, plug in that URL and look at that. We've got a little server where we can actually change some parameters here on the fly, but I'm just going to go down here and use it like chat GPT, create a Python function to extract email addresses from a string. Let's see. Hey, that's, that's actually really fast. That's really fast. 
Wow, it looks right. I haven't tested it. I'll do that in a separate video. That looks pretty good and it was really fast. It even explains it. I don't know about using more complicated examples, but for that, it worked pretty well. Now, there is another tool that actually comes with this llama.cpp, which automates this entire process that we've just done and allows you to automatically download some models. Let me show you. You call this bash script. This basically downloads, quantizes, and runs the server all in one step. Step, and it even has a little wizard to help you out. Press enter to continue. It asks you which model you want. Here are some options. These are different than the ones we used. We can do something like code llama, for example. Let's go with three. It's gonna get that one. And then the model files. These are the specific quantized files, the different versions. Uh, let's go for this one, number seven. So it's gonna go out there, grab this thing, spin up a server and be available just like we saw, but everything is automated. Consider this a little bonus for you. That was just so much faster than when I did it manually and it's done already, wow. Let's uh, have a look here, yep. There you go, same interface. Hi there, how can I help you? Can you code? Of course I can, that is insanely fast. Write a Python program to extract email addresses from a string. I have a feeling this is gonna be fast, let's see. Uh, sure, what should be the input? Huh, the input should be a string. Okay, I'll give it a shot, here's my code so far. Oh, maybe, maybe, I don't know. I'm not so sure about this one. Continue, oh, an array of strings. There's a bit more hand holding here. Not like chat GPT. Awesome. Thanks for your feedback. Okay. So this one is a little wacky. Let's quickly move on to the next thing. The next thing happens to be something called LM Studio, which was built on top of the thing I showed you. And this one makes everything so much easier. All you do is just download this. Here's download LM Studio for Mac. Double click, install it, drag it to the application folder. And well, look at that. It's done already. Let's run that. This is pretty simple because they give you options of the models right down here, right on the home page. You can get any one of these or you can just do a search. So let's say code. And we're going to select this code llama 7B instruct. It's got 311 downloads, which means it's the most popular one out of these listed. And on the right, we have the different files that you can download. But which one do we choose? How do you know? Well, click on this model card button right up here, which is going to take you to Hugging Face and you'll see information about this. First of all, you'll see the different tools available that you can run this with. Llama CPP is one of them. LM Studio is one of them. There's a few other tools available. And here is the explanation of quantization methods. I told you we'll look at this. I'm not going to explain it because I'm not 100% sure about what all these things do. But if you are interested, you can see the different explanations for how quantization works. There's different types, 5-bit, 4-bit, 6-bit, different sizes of blocks, and so on. And these quantization methods do affect performance. So for example, these are the actual models, the ones that end in GGUF. These are all code llama 7 billion instruct ones, but they're all quantized a little bit differently, yielding different results. This one down here, for example, the Q5KM is large. It's very low quality loss, and it's recommended. So we're going to use that one as opposed to like uh, this one, which is very small, but it's got a lot of loss. Let's go back to LM Studio and find Q5KM right there. Download that one. And down at the bottom, you'll see the model downloading. You wanna see how fast my internet is? Check it out. I'm just kidding. I sped the video up. All right, it's done now. So now we can chat over here by clicking on this chat bubble. And at the top, we need to select a model. So if you have multiple models you've downloaded, you can just switch between them. This is really cool. Very easy to do. I only have one here, so I'm gonna select it. And now the model is loaded. Now we just have a chat GPT type of interface, including history on the left here. Write a Python function that extracts email addresses from a string. Boom. Now this is not how you should be running this on an Apple Silicon machine, but I just wanted to show you this and show you what's going on. It's pretty decently fast. It's not as fast as chat GPT, for example. Regex doesn't look exactly right, but it did create that function right here and it made a little explanation. Interesting. So why did I say this wasn't the way to do it? Well, take 
take a look over here. First, we got RAM usage expected. It's about the same size that we saw on the uh, description. CPU is at zero, but if we hit regenerate, notice that CPU going up. And if we look at the CPU history, we got spikes there. It's not using the GPU for this, which is why it might not be as fast as possible. Let's go on the right side. Now, under presets, you have code llama completion right now, which is one of the presets you can use, but we want to use more of a chat interface. So I'm going to actually select default LM Studio Mac OS one. And then under model configuration, we want to open hardware settings. By the way, you can change all these different parameters like you did in the other tool, but here they're just more pretty fied. But the one that we really want to change right off the bat is because we are on an M3 Max or any Apple Silicon machine with a GPU, we want to go to hardware settings and enable Apple Metal GPU. Right now it's off. If we enable that, next time we run it, it's going to be turned on. So I'm going to click on this reload model to apply configuration. This model seemed to have reloaded pretty quickly, but sometimes they don't. So I need to restart the program. In this case, it worked fine. Let's go and regenerate. That was a little different, wasn't it? It was incredibly fast and it only spit out the code. I'm gonna copy that prompt and let's start a brand new chat. Not sure what's going on over there, but it is using the GPU and it's still generating. It's just generating blank text. I'm gonna restart LM Studio altogether. Just completely quit it. Let's restart it. Go back to chat, select my model. Experimental warning, both metal and M-Lock are enabled. So metal we enabled here, but M-Lock means there might be a danger of a machine freezing. For example, if you have a machine that only has eight gigabytes of RAM and you run this model through it, it's probably going to crash the entire machine. Not just gonna become unreal responsive it's just gonna crash it warns you again here if you have eight gigabytes of ram metal is not recommended i know what i'm doing because this is a 64 gigabyte machine don't try this on an eight gigabyte machine let's go ahead and try that one more time okay that's a little bit better i think no no it's not it's gone off the rails but at least it's using the gpu <laughs> In this case, it might be the model. You might need to find a model that's a little bit better than this. Don't blame the tool, LM Studio. The tool just makes things easier, makes the model access easier. But clearly this model has gone off the rails and doing silly things. So get another model. But now you know how to get these tools working. And it's really nice to have something like LM Studio to be able to bypass all the configuration options and just have the tool handle all the setup for you. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, just say hello to me, and I will see you in the next one.